hello everyone and welcome to a very special episode of take two plus this is the only podcast on the internet with a very special new sponsor the sponsor is Lanigan's Light Switches. Let Lanigan's Light Switches light up your world with new switch light technology that lets Lanigan's light your switches now oh so bright. It must be a Lanigan's Light. Uh, Lanigan's Light Switches. So a very special thank you to Lanigan's Light Switches. We are Take Two Plus, and this very special episode is a discussion on the best, the worst, the missed opportunities of 2023. Let's start with the, what I like to call the Forgotten 10, Chris. The 10 movies we forgot to watch this year. Point. Saltburn is on my list. I a wish Forgotten I was, 10. Of the Forgotten 10, yes. Okay. Uh, I wish I had seen it. I think it's A24. Uh, it looks uh, pretty edgy. Well, let and... me just tease you. It's, it's coming up later in one of my one of my two Ooh. my two top 10 lists, either worst That's, or best. Uh, Sean, that, that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. Uh, yeah, so we don't have to worry too much about that. No. Here are my, here are my forgotten tents that you clearly did not do this exercise whatsoever. Go so on. Yeah. So I haven't watched Aquaman in the Last Kingdom yet. I need to watch that so, one. Sorry. Th- these are movies that you are. I haven't to... watched yet from 2023. I no, can't but, no, but accurately rank these, them. These need to be the ones that you wanted to see. But I do want to see these oh, movies too. Jesus. So Aquaman in the Last Kingdom. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen the Marvels. Oh, you're going to love this list. I haven't seen the Marvels. Um, I haven't seen the Equalizer 3. I wanted to get around to that. Wow. I haven't seen Ferrari. I haven't seen that one. My other movies I haven't watched this year yet are Thanksgiving. I really wanted to watch that. I, 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 I really want to see Thanksgiving. Uh, I haven't seen Dumb Money, which is another, like, I think it's like All the, uh, yeah, it's like the GameStop shortage thing, like with the stocks. I haven't seen that film. And um, I haven't seen Maestro yet, Bradley Cooper's Netflix vehicle. I haven't yeah. seen that one. I haven't seen. Now this is my top three, and uh, this top third three movie. Of wishing that you've seen, but have not yeah, yet that I seen. I haven't seen from yet. Twenty twenty three. These are three movies that could potentially be on my best list, but probably won't make it. Strays, which is like the. Uh, I am who like I am. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. I think it's Jamie Fox, uh, like dog movie where they voice dogs. <laughs> strays but it's like an r-rated comedy it's called Called strays yeah it's It's called strays yeah Yeah. and like the main dogs at boston terrier and of course you know i have my boston terrier theo so i love it i haven't seen that one and uh i haven't seen blackberry which is another movie i really want to watch i saw that today as a matter of fact yes okay is it going to be on one of these lists yes it will be 100 percent. okay all right, so blackberry might be talked about i guess and the movie i most want to see which i haven't seen yet is the Iron Claw. In no particular order, I would like to mention now my top 10 misses of 2023. Wait, so these are your worst 10 films of the year? We're doing that no, first? these are the ones that uh, I haven't yet checked out that I oh. wanted to. Uh, these are the Forgotten 10. These are called the, the Forgotten 10. My, my mistake. The Forgotten 10. Um, and actually, I just saw a film on this list that is going on my first of the year. So we're just going to write that down so we don't... Or get okay. So, uh, Reptile with uh, Benicio del Toro. I've seen it. It's good. Okay. Uh, the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, a Wes Anderson film. I uh, want to see it. The, that's a short film. Uh, we could get that qualify in this. Okay. You know, it's funny is I, I just have my uh, my mouse over top of the Google popular 2023 movies, and I just recognize that it's 39 minutes. So I'm not going to count that. I didn't realize <laughs> that it was only 39 minutes, and it makes a lot more sense that Wes Anderson came up with one and a half movies not even a one and a half one he actually did a series of short films for netflix he did like four four of them i think and they were World Doll they were films yeah and that was like the longest one in about 40 minutes the other ones all were all around about i want to say 10 or 12 minutes they weren't that long the other ones so maybe but... i can include all of them then um sure well, if you want to see all of them yeah yeah I, I, netflix, well, Anderson Uber, is, or is roll a doll well roll doll is uh favorite but also wes anderson and so uh I'll consider the they go together well. Roald Dahl they're, they're, universe they're of Wes Anderson to be one. Uh, leave the world behind. I want to that will be showing up later oh. on one of these two lists. Interesting, interesting, interesting. How uh, I don't know how I feel about Sofia Coppola, but Priscilla I have not seen, and you know, mm-hmm. um, could be potentially good. And excuse me, the last uh, film. 
that I wish I had seen but did not is uh, Taylor Swift, The Heiress Tour. You're joking, right? Uh, of course I am. Mm. You're not joking. You're such a Swifty. Is that what they call them? Are they Swift? I honestly don't know what they call it. Is it Swift Heads? Swifties? It is Swift I think heads. it's Swifties. It's Swift Heads? I don't think it's Swift Heads. <laughs> So, That's about it. All right. So why don't we get into our top 10 films of the year? Okay. So I'll start first then. My number 10 film in the 10th best film. So we're counting number, downwards. Right? Number 10. <laughs> number 10 is Dream Scenario. Ooh. I watched so that. that was one of week. my forgotten few. Yep. It's a it's a really fun film and it has a concept that, you know, it's just it's pretty original with him being able to like tap into other people's subconscious and enter their dreams. It's just something that hasn't been seen. And like not that this is like a huge mainstream film, it is an independent film. I mean, it's A24. Yeah, it's I mean, got obviously a, it's they're got, big. Does, but, is it really A24? Uh it's yeah, got it's Nicolas A24. Cage. So it's that kind of makes it a big film, even if it's Well, a- you know, Nicolas Cage is also willing to do those very small B movies just for a paycheck from time to time. And this kind of like falls in between those two categories, I'd say. Okay. Uh Mm, my goodness, I must have the clue, as the kids say. My number 10, Sean, of 2023 is Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. Uh, you okay. Have with so his... what happens if we both have the movie on the list? What should we do in that situation? You, you simply mentioned that it's, okay, well, that's your three. And then we don't talk about your three because uh, this is my nine. So, okay. Or ten. Yeah, well, that's that's my <laughs> number six. So we both have ta- we both have Asteroid City on our list. All right, so uh, let me begin by saying that it's number 10 on my list, Asteroid City, being a fan of Wes Anderson, but also a fan of the actors that he employs and his aesthetic. What I love about Asteroid City is how it tells the story in different layers, right? Like it has, like, there's the layer of, like, the, the, like, the being told from, like, a different, like, from a television set kind of point of view. Yeah, Brian Cranston doing a great Rod uh, Sterling yeah from this black and white footage and then like coming into the you know the and then the actors put it but they're all putting on a play or something right like they're all putting on this they're telling the story of this playwright and but it's interesting playwright... because uh, it's only charlie Theron, or not charlie Theron, but Scarlett Scarlett Johansson, Johansson, who's the actress she's the only she plays the actress in a movie where everyone's supposed to be actors and so it it and they rehearse scenes jason sportsman and um Scarlett Johansson and so it you you're talking about a film within a film within yeah it's good you know what Um, my favorite bit of Asteroid City was what the alien yeah it looks ridiculous it's got sci-fi too it's got like a little bit of everything that I love which is like breaking the fourth wall the layers of like meta context and then like sci-fi aliens plus like Wes Anderson's quirkiness sometimes it's a it sometimes is it can be a negative and overpower a film and just like kind of but it's 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 it works a lot yeah it really works in this movie Maybe my favorite movie of his, which is kind of like saying something. Like I don't know. That I, is saying something because Royal really Tenet Bombs. Like it's like really early I on. Like, is quite excellent as well. Sean, what is your number nine? The number nine film of twenty twenty three. My number nine film of twenty twenty three is The Killer, David Fincher's Netflix film. I am kind of. I'll be honest. I'm kind of surprised it fell down this low. I start started off making this list and i had it like in the top three and then i just kept going from movie to movie i'm like wow the killer is falling further yeah. and further Sean, and further you and i both share the killer as our number nine film of 2023 oh well, great so we can both have a conversation about it that's sure. fantastic great uh i i really love it like i do like it so much more than like mank which was not one of david fincher's best films mank like was. the yeah, the the movie, his last film, the movie. I, did, like, I want to say it was like three years ago. You haven't yeah. seen it? No. So yeah, number nine, The Killer. It is a David Fincher film, and so there's a gloss, and there's an excellence to it. There's such a well. nice sheen, great music. I mean, the movie, like, it's like what seventy five percent voiceover. Most of the dialogue is like, yeah. it's most vo- most it's, of voice, it's but all it works through uh, Fast Bender. It kind of works because Fastbender's been gone for a few years, so you're kind of happy to see him because, like, he hasn't acted in a few years. Yeah, we all um, we all miss Michael Fastbender, and I think um, a movie like this really complements his acting style, which is minimal and there is mm-hmm, very internal. little dialogue. I mean, it, what what would be difficult with this film would be the screenplay, because it's you, you you're really kind of all in his head the entire time as he uh, navigates the world of, you know, basically John Wick shit. Written by Andrew Kevin Walker. Um, I'm pretty sure he wrote uh, Seven. 
For number eight, Sean, this is a film that you and I both saw, and it is Napoleon. I thought Napoleon was uh, the number eight film of 2023. So what put that on your list? Because I got to be honest, it was not on my list this year. It it didn't, it almost sniffed it, but it didn't, it didn't make it. So Napoleon would have made so much more sense if it came out like early 2000s, like Gladiator. You know what I mean? Well, that was, yeah, I guess more popular that era. uh, You know, the the grandeur, the scale, um, you know, the fine tunis that Ridley Scott offers. The epicness, uh, historical. Uh, it's a Hollywood darling, Napoleon, and it would have won best film of probably like any year in the '90s, probably, and uh, half of the 2000s. It won't win best picture this year, I don't think, but uh, it is good. And you know, it's Joaquin a good Phoenix movie. is a really good actor. And there are times when I'm like, man, he's like. So when I okay, let me just say this: when I think of Napoleon now, I'm going to be thinking of Joaquin Phoenix. Frankly, <laughs> really, you're not, not that I think thinking of Napoleon, of like, but yeah, you know who I used to think of for some reason, and I'm sure he did play him in like a joke once in some random movie. It was like Bob Hoskins, like <laughs> random, really? like short person. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, so, so All right. that was so, my yeah. number eight. What is your number eight? Of my number eight is a movie you want to see yourself called Saltburn. Uh, oh, Saltburn 824. Yeah, this is no, this is Amazon. This is uh, oh. GM. Amazon MGM. I didn't really like. I didn't knew nothing about this movie. Turning it on, like, do you know much about this movie? Like, do you? Uh, do you... It features that uh, new actor that everyone's obsessed with. Oh, I always like Barry... have such trouble with his name. Yeah, Barry <laughs> Keenan or something. Yeah. Uh, Barry Keegan. Barry Keegan, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's also directed by Emerald Fennel, promising young woman from a couple years ago. Yeah, there was one point in the movie where I was I was texting someone talking about watching this movie while I was watching it and they said uh oh uh, yeah I've seen the I've heard about that movie I've seen the reactions on TikTok. And I was like what reactions on TikTok what does that mean? Like I, what is why would there people be posting reactions on TikTok to this movie? And as I'm watching that there's a scene where like this guy is jerking off in a tub and then the main character goes and drinks that bath water when he's finished. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's uh, that's why they're talking about this film. Okay. Emerald basically said when she was talking about the film that she approached it as like a vampire film. And if you know that going up with the movie, going to the movie, I think you would kind of get a different appreciation for it. I kind of wish I knew that watching the movie because now when I go back and think about it, I realize it really is just the story of Dracula played out in a much different way. So that's my number eight. So Chris, what's your number seven then? Uh, my never said was Sean is a horror film by A24 called Talk to Me. Um, Danny and Michael Philip Philip yeah, Brothers. No? I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing that improperly. Uh, that's well, what, what, what's amazing is is they are YouTube creators and they have jumped in with a really strong first offering of Talk to Me. And it almost... Oh, it's number five on my list too, by the way. I should oh, number yeah. five on my list. Um rightfully so. Totally understand. And I think it's it gives credence to YouTube creators because if they're able to jump this high up on people's list and you have people like, uh, what's his face? Um, David Fincher, not even getting there, right? It speaks to a very high quality of uh, YouTube yeah. creators. It's good. I feel like what this movie, the year in movies, it's been pretty good. I, this has happened a lot lately in the past few years where the movie has overall been pretty good, but there's been very few movies where I've just been, that is utterly fantastic. Like that's the best movie I've yeah. seen in a long time. Like that hasn't happened in a while. Well, that's, like the, the movie, number, the number one movie on my list came close, but it still didn't quite create that. But uh, yeah, it was a really strong year for movies, but I didn't quite have that one movie where I was just like, I absolutely love that film. No, I, I didn't have that either. Uh, but before we go on, Sean, just another shout out to Lanigan's Light Switches. This is uh, my first choice in light switches. Let Lanigan's Light Switches light up your world quick. With quick new switch light technology that lasts Lanigan's Lights. All right, let's try and get our your new switches five, now. At least, oh. at least five of these done before the time runs out. So my number seven. Well, no, wait, what, one second. Oh, so bright. Must be a Lanigan's Light. All right. Glad you got uh, that in for the second time. Uh, my number seven is a movie called Poor Things. Oh, I, I never saw that. that that's on my uh, mist. I can't believe it wasn't list? on the... The new Yorgos Lanthimos yes, film. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, it looks 
trippy, man. So I went to go see that with a good friend of ours who shall rename nameless, but I live with him, so I know you know who we're talking about. And well, uh, being homeless, uh, I guess you live with all of us, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I do. Uh, he even he like he's hard to like. like he didn't love this movie because he's hard. He's hard to enjoy to get a movie he enjoys. He's a, but, uh, he's a more conservative. He's a tough critic. He's a tough critic. Well, but, he's, uh, he's he's not inclined to more fantastical films. I would imagine that's true too. He doesn't like fantastical stuff, and this movie is very fantastical. It's like a fairy tale, basically. It's like a fairy tale version of Frankenstein told in a completely different way. And it's a little bit too long. There are moments, there are things I would have changed, sure, but like the movie just looks amazing. Emma Stone is fantastic in it. Mark Ruffalo is hilarious. Uh, Willem Dafoe is just so weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's just so many good things going on in this movie that, like, yeah, there's a little, it's a little overbloated, but it's it's a pretty fantastic film. Is it a Terry Gilliam kind of film? A little bit. I would say even more so than uh, Lanthomas' other films because like, he's always had a very distinct vibe to his movies, but visually yes. they've all, all been quite normal, I think, for the most part. Like They've kind of looked average and everyday stuff in terms of just decor. And of course, this is kind of also a period piece, which might play into it a bit, I guess. So but, sort of um, alternate dimension period piece. Well, the favorite. Favorite was period, right? But it didn't look that strange. I'm trying to remember. Emma Stone film. Yeah, he does apparently like to work with Emma Stone and she with him. Especially based on the stuff she's willing to do for him in this movie. I'm going to guess they enjoy working together. Number six. Uh, Number six was Asteroid City for me. So what's your number six? Number six for me. Good question. Dungeons and Dragons. (laughs) Really? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, It is Lord of the Rings good. It's it's uh, um, wow. I would definitely not go that far, but okay. Uh, no, it like it it really does remind me of like a mix between Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. It's funny. It's charming. Um, there's a great message to it. And for my money, like I think there's already been Dungeons and Dragons movies, and you got like Warcraft movie. They all suck. Here's here's a movie that like is great. It's really really great and it's entertaining. It's entertaining. Oh, you saw it. Yeah, I did. I saw it. I enjoyed it. Like it's it's a fun movie. You're you must be a sucker for Chris Pine, I guess. But uh... you know what? I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for silly comedy. I'm a sucker for silly comedy. And there's a lot but of silly, silly like comedy. family comedy. Yeah, silly, so like jumping onto the bird and then flying down. Like that. That I thought was like just great. So number six for you, Sean, is what in your top ten best films of the year? Okay, great. Well, uh, so we know number five for me is Talk to Me. So what's your number five, Chris? Number five for me, Sean. So this is where things get kind of difficult. Number five for me is Bo is Afraid. Wow, that's my number one movie of the year. Is it really? I had to take it off the list. All right, so I I need need you to talk to me about Bo is Afraid, Sean, because you and I both saw it together. And it and you've uh, since seen four movies that are better than that. We were just talking like a week and a half ago that we both thought it was the best movie of the year. Yeah. And you're telling me since then, since the past week and a half, we've seen four movies. I would say, I would better. say and, and no recency bias, you've decided those four movies are better than Bo's Afraid. So I mean it's, it's your number one. You have to have a bit of a spiel, I suspect, for uh, you know. Not really. I really don't have a bit of a spiel. other than to say that it like what I was talking kind of about with dream scenario. And I would say to a slightly lesser degree with a movie like Saltburn and Poor Things, like this movie is just so original. Like there's just yeah, so many that's things the word that, for it. that like you just haven't really seen before. Yes, it's bizarre. It's unusual. And a lot of people just aren't going to get it. But it's a very strange film. And it's, it's a film that you, so have good. To, you know what? It takes no quarter. You're either going to hate it or yeah. you're going to love it. Yeah, and you're going to be with it for almost three hours, so you're going right. to have to take it. <laughs> like, yeah, no, but that's what I mean, though. It, like you're, yeah. it's an experience, and I I'm really happy that I got to see it, yeah. and that's why it's my number five, and uh, your number one, and I'm not going to argue yeah. uh, with uh, your number one because it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think Walking Phoenix like is just fantastic in the movie. I think that uh, there's a lot more nuance that he brings to this world than he necessarily brings to Napoleon. I think which it's is my just favorite kind of, of his films. Like and that's like well, it's, and you you put it higher than Napoleon, so you must like it more than that. But, well, I like uh, it more than Napoleon, but I also like it more than Johnny Cash, which I thought he was excellent in. Um, so you think this is his best role of all time? You think yeah. this is like yeah, yeah, I think so. 
I think he. I'd he, have to really think about that, and I. I don't know if this is like. I think the master's up there. Like them, he's so good in the master. But I mean, um, you, this you're, is close. You're splitting hairs because they're they're of they're both of a quality that uh, is. Yeah, well, that's what you're right. I mean, it ultimately comes down to like what's. Yeah, it's it's. it's I, I, sorry, but. Sean, you're just gonna have to uh, save me a second. I have to plug in my computer because our conversation is taking way too long. Oh my god! So, um, but yeah, I just think that the uh, the movie itself is just. It's so interesting, and uh, it's it like it might be even though it's not a comedy, it's probably the funniest movie that I've seen all year. Like I'm looking at my list, and sadly there is not one real comedy on it to even speak of. Uh, and this movie certainly isn't a comedy, but it is it is a dark comedy. It's a black comedy, and uh, that goes a long way with me. And uh, plus, it's got some spiritual elements and some sci-fi stuff and it's just got so much going on with it like there's a little bit of everything in this movie for everyone if you're willing to experience it it's like the um less successful cousin of wizard of oz there's almost a little bit of that in this movie yeah, i can 100%. see that yeah I mean, that's I mean that's apparently like I mean that's even like David Lynch's favorite movie. So I don't know. I must have impact a lot of filmmakers, but sorry. I mean, you, I enjoyed you, that movie. You, his but. his favorite movie of the year, or just his favorite movie. No, I, I'm talking about Wizard of Oz. Was is, is David right. Lynch's favorite? Oh, movie. and there's that film as well. Yeah, with um, um, Lynch Oz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Moving forward, uh, yeah. Bo's Afraid. Yeah, great movie, Bo's Afraid. And are you? Of the type where Ari Aster has had the best film each year, he has had a film. I don't know if that's quite how it's broken down, but it's been like at least top three each year. Like, it's been pretty damn close. Like, I, I think he's probably like, I don't know if he's again, like, I don't know if he's like, I'd have to really think about it. I mean, I love David Fincher and I do, I mean, I, I think Ari Aster is fantastic. Um, He's up. He's probably again. He's probably my top three favorite filmmakers. Again, I can't say he's my favorite, but yeah, he's close. I think that's where like the threshold is, like top five, top. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, yeah, that, like it's, Nolan it's... probably. I mean, Nolan probably has a number one spot. If I'm being completely honest, but yeah. all right. Well, Sean, I talked about my number five. Your number five was what again? Talk to me. So we've talked about that one. Yes, number four uh, for myself, at least, or maybe it's should I go your... next? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? So my number four is Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese. Ooh, that is number mode. three for me. Oh, so we, I'm cutting ahead of you for once. Well, um, you may take the lead, sir. <laughs> I I gotta be honest. I haven't really loved the Scorsese movie since I don't know, maybe Shutter Island. I really, so I, didn't, am, I, I didn't like that. Film. I know you probably didn't like that. But I love Shutter Island. I fucking love Shutter Island. I also yeah, a lot really to probably relate to it. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Silence, but on a completely different, non Martin Scorsese level. Like it's just such a good movie, and, and I completely uh, appreciate your non, yeah. your reference to like it being a non Scorsese film. I mean, yeah, there are certainly elements that do make it a Scorsese film, like the exploration of faith. But there are just it doesn't really feel like a Scorsese movie for whatever reason. No, I mean, you figure um, that it probably is because Last Temptation of Christ. So yeah, he loves exploring the idea of faith, and that's certainly totally with it. But it doesn't like I don't know a lot of like uh, of Scorsese's movies, especially since he started working with DiCaprio a lot, have a certain like sheen to them. And I don't know why so we're talking so much about is, silence. Is, no, but what I'm saying is he he well he he has that's the sheeniest like that's the shiniest movie. He's like that's so glossy. The Departed like that movie's so glossy. But it's and, also one of the best films ever. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's a so fucking badass. fantastic movie. It's so yeah. badass. It's a and, great movie. And, and that's what I associate um, Martin Scorsese with, and that's badassery. He is more street than man, and he can hang out with the, the toughest of them. And I think yeah. that you get no more real kind of... So would you say this just... movie is street? Is this movie street? Yeah, well, it's organized crime. Case? It's organized crime. On a very different On a very, on a different, very level. different level, yes. But it's organized crime nonetheless. And it shows how it happens. And it shows how a person through certain family uh, connections can get involved with it. And uh, I loved, uh, Fla I saw it last night, actually, Flowers of the Killer Moon. And um, it, uh, I thought it was really good because of just like the, the, the great morality of like Leonardo DiCaprio's character, just the, the sad between, tragedy yeah. of, of underrepresentation when it comes to indigenous 
uh, people. Right. Uh, I learned something. And just which how is... he treated his wife, like like that dynamic between him, he and his wife, was just so fascinating. With like how he's just poisoning her with yes. this with, with this uh, insulin. This and then when he life. he admits to everything, he doesn't admit to that. It, it's. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah! He, like he's so he's really good in this movie. Like DiCaprio, especially like the little accent, the way he always rests his face in this like hick frown. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's just like this very like it just lets his face droop yeah. and just Slot like uh, yeah, like he's just he's so good in this movie and uh, and uh, Lily Gladstone, his wife, she's fantastic yes. in it. She too. And, I uh, I think was my favorite part. De Niro is almost channeling like um who did he play in the untouchables of oh, fucking mobster uh, god damn it uh, al, capone. al capone like he's almost channeling like a more friendly he is al so capone. menacing in this like film. but he's like a grandfather al capone like he's just like he's like the the nicest al capone you no, can imagine like he is he, he but he's ruthless he, he, he's ruthless. speaking he's speaking all sorts of different things whenever he's talking he's saying like all sorts of different things whenever he's talking and there are undertones and there yeah. are things being said between the lines. But One of the things that I really liked about Clothes of the Flower Moon were simply the amount of um, guest appearances. There were so many yeah. amazing <laughs> Like guests. when Brendan Fraser pops up for random. Brendan like Fraser, you got Jack White doing the... Um, what? Jack White? I don't even recognize Jack White was doing was the uh, one of the characters in the radio play at the end. Oh, uh, was he? Yeah. Uh, I also... really like that with Martin Scorsese showed up at the end. Like yes. I really like that when Scorsese showed up. I almost wish they had ended on that moment with just him and faded to black, but it would have been like too egotistical of him to end on himself. Like they had to cut then to that like the drum line, or they were doing like the Native American dance in the and it's a beautiful ending with like the flower uh, they pull I got the impression and, uh, I got yeah. the impression that that is them today. That was filmed. Yeah, in yeah, that it, community. yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. And a, they don't say that, movie. but. But By it's the like the end ending of, of The Departed, right? When they cut to pre- – no, not Departed, but Gangs of New York, when they cut to present-day New York, don't they? Like, doesn't he fade out from, like, the New York that they settled in? And That's then one it goes of my to, like... less favorite Scorsese films. Yeah, films. Scorsese always ends movies weird, and then it's like the rat in The Departed. Yeah. Like, he, he's willing to get, like, really weird in the last Well, second. he understands the importance of the end shot. Uh, so, number – that was what for you, Sean? Number four? Four. Right. So, my number four is Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, this was the Palme d'Or winner. Uh, the Did it. she do it? I think it's hashtag Did she do it? Hash Did she do it? dot com. And uh, that 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 website's right here. Yeah. And uh, it's one of those movies where you're asking yourself, Did she do it? Did she not do it? This um, is an international film, right? Is this an Amer- This isn't an American film, right? This is a Danish film, I think. Danish film. Yeah. It's. Is uh, it? Is some of it in English or is some of it? The uh, entire film's in English. It is. Uh, no, sorry, it's a French film. The entire film's in English, but there's bits of French. Um, but like, and there's, yeah, like subtitles, whatever. It's, it's a courtroom film, essentially. Uh, and we see essentially a very curated, um, uh, very curated time of this person dying. And we only see certain things from certain perspectives. And it's like uh, Rushmore, or sorry, Rashomon. Rush. It's like the Akira Kurosawa Rashomon. It's like, is it like different? Is it the same story told from different perspectives? Yes, but the thing that is missing is that there's there's no, like, I saw this person do it. You know what I mean? There's no like, eyewitness. It's all, it's all, it's entirely just circumstantial, the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And you have a child that's blind that's talking about, you know, what he heard and various things and you have to consider just like how important his testimony is and and in the end you know the the the, the ending is uh good and um yeah i was happy to have seen it i i heard it was that should good. probably bump aquaman off of my forgotten 10 i, I, oh, I don't know sean you, you got uh you marvels, think marvels I mean, oh i haven't seen the marvel well, i haven't bumped the marvels off yet well, i just said aquaman. Marvels, so yeah I, I, I just said aquaman just did so you see vhs 85 I didn't know. So that was my number 11. It was VHS. Well, we don't care about number 11. We're here for the top 10. Ooh, All top right. 10. Number three for me is the film Leave the World Behind, which is Ooh. one of your forgotten 10s as yes. well. I haven't seen it. Um, that is, of yeah, course, my number I, uh, three was Flowers of the Killer Moon. Like, 
I'll put up a slight disclaimer in that I think Sam Esmail is like a fucking fantastic writer and filmmaker. So I'm a little partial to his movies, but because uh, I love Mr. Robot. That's just a disclaimer yeah. to all our uh, viewers. Yeah. Mr. Robot is one of the top 10 television series of the past. I don't know, ever, maybe even ever. Like I fucking love Mr. Robot. Not a fan. Anyways, keep going. Uh, this movie, I don't, it's just so much fun. What this movie does absolutely the best is the one thing that I really love when movies do well. It's create a sense of dread throughout. It does that thing that The Shining does, where you're just uneasy throughout the entire movie because you know something is wrong and something horrible is going to happen. And you're basically just waiting for the other shoe to drop like the entire time. And uh, this movie, I, again, I didn't know much going into it other than Sam Esmail was the person behind it and then the actors of course julia roberts and uh ethan hawk and <laughs> kevin bacon is in this movie and it's always weird because like ethan hawk and kevin bacon maybe the same actor in certain ways but they're in this movie together and it's just weird to see them what do you mean they're the same screen. actor i feel like i don't know they, they cut lives. no ethan, don't get me wrong ethan hawk way better of an actor but <laughs> but they almost kind of look similar physically and they probably were up would against each other for the same roles over right the yeah yeah yes, so like yes, that. Yes. Um, also, of course, Mahershala Ali, he's really good in this movie as well. Um, but it's just uh, it's just a really strange, like almost it's like it's not post-apocalyptic because it's like it's during the apocalypse type thing. It's just like it's a this really but it's contained to this family and it's like a really interesting family. And then, of course, this other family comes in and gets involved. And it's just like I don't want to say too much about it, because if you haven't seen it yet, it's like that's the fun of watching these movies yeah. is not understanding what's going on in the movie. But uh, it's just uh, it's just a really it, it's a really uh, tension filled movie. Like there's a lot of tension in it. And uh, the other thing I would say is like I really am not a fan of Julia Roberts, and this is still in my top three for the year. And because it doesn't even matter, it's just so good. And she's good in it too. <laughs> you haven't seen her in a while. Yeah. America's funny girl. America's pretty face. So uh, your number three, Chris. What's your number three? My number three we discussed already is Flowers of the Killer Moon. Okay, so we're on to number two. So should I go first or should you go first? Number three, no. Flower so of the Killer Moon, which means the, number two, Sean. Uh, is that you or me? Well, who, I was just asking you that. Do you want to go first or do you want me to number two? I guess you. You go number two first. Oppenheimer. You go number two. Oh, that's my number two as well. Ooh, great minds. The last movie I had to talk about. Yeah, because again, Bone is Not Afraid is my number one film, so Oppenheimer is yeah. my second. Okay. Uh, again, like Christopher I mean, Nolan, yeah, I mean, he can never what, do any what can wrong. You say really, yeah, he's, he's just keeps. What I love about Christopher Nolan is just that he love he finds new ways to tell a story that you just you just you can never ex know what you're going. In. You can never expect something going into a Christopher Nolan movie because he's going to find a way to tell the story that you're not expecting it. Yeah. And yeah. even though like the three part structure of like how he tells the story, especially like the flashbacks. And then there's all of the stuff at the actual, you know, at the at the Los Alamos facility. And then there's like, and then there's the courtroom stuff. Like it's a really long movie, but god damn it, it's just so fucking fantastic. It looks beautiful. The acting's fantastic the other the entire time. Everything's the, practical. Like I just ah, I just fucking love the movie. Uh, based on the Pulitzer Prize winning novel American Prometheus, Oppenheimer was a tour de force film, historic. Uh, and and with a protagonist who we must appreciate as being both a great man and an awful man with respect to his genius for destruction. Um, but I would say this movie really kind of like sanctifies him though. Like it makes him like a martyr. So it make it doesn't really point to his. It doesn't like yes, it does bring up like did we make they, a huge mistake? They make it sound like if it wasn't him, it was going to be them, and that's what makes me sure, happy. sure. But also, it's just like they make him a martyr because of the entire third act of him being like a, like a witch trial, like a witch hunt. Like, well, we we know that it was the big reason why they won World War Two. Actually, apparently, there there are well, other reasons, but. Uh, they had already defeated Europe, but okay. and you'll have to check out our review for that right here in the hero's journey. All right, well, we've already gone through my number one. So, what is your number one film of the year, then, Chris? I'm I can't wait to find out because I have no idea what it could possibly be. Well, actually, Sean, this is one of the movies that you mentioned in your 
Well, forget me not. Oh, forgot intent. My forgot intent. Jesus Christ, you for, cannot the, get it right. Yeah, the forget me nots. Uh, forget Black me not. Berry. I wish it was called that. Blackberry's number one. Really? Blackberry is the best movie of the year. It is directed by a man named Matt Johnson, and he is an actor. He, he well, he's also the director and he's the actor <laughs> in the film as well. But he uh, has also done a TV show called Nirvana: The Band, The Show. Which is, for my money, one of the funniest shows of all time. Yeah, you've talked about it before. I've never really watched it. Well, and so maybe it should be. Done. I've seen parts. You've shown me parts of it. And I've been like, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep watching the Marbles and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll keep watching the Marbles and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, so, I but mean, okay, just... I do want to see this movie. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, yeah. I just didn't. You know what happened? It's on Crave, like the the movie service Crave here. And guess what? I, I go and I turn it on. French. Only French. You cannot get an English version of of Blackberry on Crave. You can only watch Is the it French subtitled dub. in English. No, it's subtitled in French. Jesus, <laughs> I was almost willing to watch the French and read English subtitles, and you could not turn on English subtitles. I would recommend not watching it in French um, for all of our viewers. It it was almost for me a better version of, and we talked about uh, David Fincher before this uh, podcast, but uh, a better on par with Social Network, and for me funnier, and also delves into just wow the, Social Network. You're really getting it up there. I mean, not only number one of the year, but on par with Social Network. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, don't get me yeah. wrong; it's not one of my favorite Fincher movies, but it's a lot of people's favorite Fincher movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that has to do with the soundtrack. For which this one's excellent. Uh, yeah. You have complicated characters that, like Mark Zuckerberg, you're like, I don't know if I like him or if I hate him. Uh, you have those characters with this film. Matt Johnson, I think just his general um, sense of comedy just really works, speaks to me, which is good. And uh, I, 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 I saw it and I'm like, damn, like if I was to have made a movie, that would have been the movie that I would have wanted to make out of all the movies this year. All right, fair enough. Yeah. All right, let's go through our worst of the year quickly, just because we probably don't have a lot of time, but also just because they're not worth talking about, really, right? Well, so they are should... the worst of the year, and so we should be spending our time on the best stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you have an order, or or is it no particular? I'm order? just gonna go. I mean, it's not really. I mean, it's in order, but it's not really a particular order. I'm just well, gonna go a, a through them. Answer. If you want to say something to this, then you can say something. To All right, it. I'll this is me. the order. They're, they're, well, let me. Number ten. Number ten. Haunted Mansion. It's fine. It. It's silly. It's stupid. Okay. Number nine, The Machine. It's a it. uh, well, well, at comedy. least with like the Haunted Mansion, you have all of you have no excuse for a bad movie, right? Really, like you you have the budget, well, you have IP, the actors. Sure, sure. The Machine, yeah, and The Machine is like a stand-up comedian's first movie about his life. Like, put like what's his name again? Brett. Brett. Kreischer? Bert, Bert Kreischer or something. Yeah. I just I don't I, he's kind of funny in stand up, but this movie what? is fun. Have Again, you seen him movies... without his shirt? It's hilarious. Number eight is The Outlaws. It was some weird That's Netflix funny. movie with like Pierce Brosnan and uh I like the guy, Adam Devine, like he's a funny guy, but the movie just didn't work. Number seven was Hypnotic. Oh god, I was this is where I started to get disappointed because this is a Robert Rodriguez movie. I even like Ben Affleck. This movie is terrible. <laughs> Okay. I was just saying that Robert Rodriguez is no longer an auteur director. He used to be. And uh, Ben Affleck never gets motivated to actually act unless he's working with one of those. So that's what's wrong with Hypnotic. Uh, number six, Fast X. Oh, my God. This movie was what's bad. Wrong with you? It was just so fun. I have bad. too much time. On my, or no, I don't have enough time. On my, it's like, you're that's watching. what I'm saying. I'm no wonder you don't have enough time X. on your hand. Hey, you're I said the watching top five. literally the shittiest things ever. I like, said the top five are bad. I said the top, well, the top six is bad. Okay, so Every Fast moment's X, a gift. Fast X, bad. You want to spend Number it with five. Vin Diesel? Fuck yeah, you. well, apparently I won't be anymore if these uh, accusations are going to go by. You're my family now, Sean. <laughs> We're family. We're family yeah. now, Sean. You spent sleeve. enough money it's like, on Oh, me God, that... look how pale this is. This is nice. It's just Legally, like, yeah. We're family. <laughs> yeah. You just got to shave your head, man, and you'll be all set because yeah. we're family. All right, so number five. The Exorcist, Believer. Ooh. Terrible movie. It just did Number not five. work. But that shouldn't be that surprising because the fucking last few movies, David 
fucking Gordon Green has made have been absolutely fucking terrible. Uh, All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next, number four. I watched this movie on Christmas night, hoping it would be good. It was not. It's called Silent Night. And God damn it, if anyone wanted a John Woo movie to good be good, it'd be us. Oh, but man. this movie is I was wondering, that was that was on my forgot. Well, it wasn't on my forgotten, but no. it ought to have it been. is so it's returned so bad. to form. Oh no, no it is so bad. It is Ooh. so bad. It's not worth watching. Chrissy no likey. Uh, you just can't do a movie with no dialogue. You just can't. The first forty minutes of this movie, where they're trying to set up the entire story, are like torture. And Number so it, three, a movie called Sixty Five. You probably have no idea what this is. It was Adam like a Driver, weird, yeah, 65, exactly, a weird ago. sci-fi movie. I was actually looking forward to this movie. I'm like, oh, a sci-fi movie with dinosaurs. This could be awesome. No, nope, absolutely terrible absolutely shit but sean with a strong title like 65 you would think it would oh be my ex- god i don't even remember what the 65 stands for that's how bad this fucking 65 movie was. million years ago oh sure. the Jurassic Park, yeah. Uh... Yeah. you're right i missed that but it's so bad it's so bad number two is a movie from netflix called heart of stone it's uh with gal gadot it's basically like if mission impossible had a female lead it's it's not good it's just not good because and it's too bad because there's a screenplay by Greg Rucka, who's actually a pretty good comics writer. I, this is probably, if I had to guess, based on one of his comics, although I'm not sure about that, so don't quote me on it. Well, you but you say it anyways. Movie, yeah, I will say it anyways, just because like most uh, comic writers like consume their own IP. That makes sense. Um, Tell us but anyway, what else makes sense, Sean? This movie, not good. It's just so boring and generic. And my last and absolute worst movie of the well, year no, wait, is Number movie, two, isn't it? No, that was Heart of Stone with number two. Oh, sorry. I thought that was number three. Number no. one, Sean's worst. Number Film one is a 22. movie called Hidden Strike with Jackie Chan See, and that's John on my list. Cena. That's on my list. <laughs> it was so fucking bad. I don't remember a goddamn second of it. All I remember is how do you have Jackie Chan and John Cena and create something so forgettable? So that's a it Chinese so film. Bad. Yes. That's it's not, I mean, it's it's not yes. an American film. When the daughter pops up in the... Uh, ATV, and she's like, "How come you were never there?" I'm like, "This is the worst exposition I've ever heard in my entire." I turned it off after that. <laughs> but it's on your list, and you didn't even watch it all. I at least watched it all. No, but the best films you watch, the worst films you do not. Oh, finish. so you didn't even finish all these? All right, so we've got. Sorry, I, it sounds like I really missed a lot though with Hidden yeah. Strike. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, tell me the rest. Tell me your worst ten, bottom ten of the list. Come on. Uh, right uh, on my list for the uh, worst films of the year. Knock at the cabin. This movie. Yeah, that was t- it. Was a bad movie, and it was also on a lot of top ten lists. By the way, just really? so you know, a lot of top ten lists. It, it would be a great theatrical, not theatrical, like a theater film. Like it would be a great. It was fun for fifteen minutes, and then I like knew exactly what was going to happen until the, the end of the movie, an simply, hour later. Simply. Up. Atrocious. Well, Batista was good, but other than that, yeah. You have to do the thing because if you don't, we all die. You have to understand that when you're when you're ranking wrestlers acting, it's on a scale, but still, it's pretty good. He's all a, right. Well, he's. I don't know if he's known for his. Um, he's better wrestling. than any other wrestling acting. <laughs> wrestling Denis acting. Villeneuve film. He, he's a, he's an actor now. Uh, so number four, uh, the last voyage of the Demeter. This was the Dracula reference. I haven't watched that yet. I'm looking forward to it. It's not good. It is truly bad, huh? awful. In fact, you know what, Sean? Oh, okay. It holds the uh, same spot, number four, with Hidden Strike. So oh. number four, uh, Hidden Strike, worst film of the year, as well as the last voyage of the Demeter. Well, number four wouldn't be the worst, but okay. Uh, so I have three films that I think are worst. Oh, I have four, three films, sorry, that are shared for number four. Maybe I, well, I should have done that for number three. So three movies. That I don't know why you couldn't just rank these like without making them share their space, but okay. Uh, because they're just so awful. Uh, the Covenant, yeah. Guy Ritchie. Oh, yeah, the Army one. Yeah, I yes. didn't watch that. because Truly, oh, Jake stupid. Gyllenhaal. I hate it. American military films, so I tend to avoid them. Okay. Well, we'll see uh, if anyone cares. But uh, you can respond in the comments below if you care. Um, number three, Cocaine Bear. Never in the history of film it, has, it, has it there been a movie that could have, like, yeah, it could have been good. It could have been like a lot of. I like. Don't get me could wrong. Could have been amazed. I don't actually think it was that bad. Like, I wouldn't put it on the worst ten. I just thought it could have been better, like quite a bit better. It have been so good. It was neither a scary movie, a funny movie, a dramatic movie, 
an adventure film. Yeah, their tone would just didn't work. The tone it was didn't quite it's work. not a gangster like it's it's yeah. not a true story. Yeah. And yeah, they uh, got a ton of love in the press, but you know, go figure. All right, go ahead. I mean, Cocaine Bear, it's just like Ziggs and Plane. It's just great. Both animal films, both amazing yeah, films. So this movie bothered me for a variety of reasons. Uh, the first reason is almost uh, something that has to do with recent developments in the world of entertainment with um, the intellectual property of Mickey Mouse no longer uh, being the trademarked. The movie. Winnie the Pooh, Blood you and watch, Honey. You, wa- you watch some truly terrible movies. No wonder why this is like <laughs> you have three more worse movies <laughs> than the other fucking movie you mentioned. All right, well, yeah, this movie is terrible. Let, the, sure. let them let, Dude, let no it be a wonder. Let why be would a you war- watch this? Sean, have you seen it? No, because I know not to fucking watch it. It's going to be terrible. Uh, By the way, did you well, know that a teacher accidentally showed this movie to his class thinking it was a Winnie the Pooh movie and uh, then got like suspended for it? That guy should yeah. be fired. Anyways, number <laughs> one, uh, Exorcist Believer. This is the world's uh, worst film. That's the, number one? Yeah. It's the most insulting thing. There's no way it was worse than that Pooh movie. There's no way it was worse than that Winnie I think it movie. affected me worse because of just um, the stakes of make. Don't call it the Exorcist, you know. But don't it, it, don't raise the, the bar that high. And, and if you do raise the bar that high, right? If you're a high jumper and the idea is to jump this high, and you jump this high, let me just put it on the camera. This high because it's so low. Uh, you've embarrassed yourself, and you've embarrassed everyone around you. And, and well, so to be fair, one, it was a very low bar even to begin with. No, for Exorcist the Exorcist sequels for Exorcist sequels. You know what? No I know. One, I no know, one knows. I know no one remembers three, what you're talking about. I know three I know what you're is talking fantastic. About. I know three is fantastic, but after just one, it was 1993. I think 1991, maybe. No, it was the 80s. No, it was early 90s. Early 90s. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was the early 90s. <laughs> Anyways, so Exorcist Believer is the worst film of the year. Uh, Sean, uh, we we talked about uh, the films that um, uh, were our we've favorites. done it all. We we're spent. We're we've spent. done it all. All right, let's say goodbyes, Chris. We got less than a minute left. All right, we have less than a minute left. My internet connection is unstable, it's and I am for shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, Sean, it's been so nice talking to you about the best, worst, and weirdest films of 2023. Do you have any message? Happy New Year, Chris. Happy New Year. Happy, uh, happy uh, Rude Lou Year for you. All right, let's edit this thing really quick and put it up real fast, right, bud? <laughs> If only we could actually cut the reaction on your face right now, but we can't because it's silent. So too bad. Won't be silent for very long, Sean. Hey, that's pretty good.